and glad to have you back. Now onto politics now. There is a popular saying that when two elephants fight, the grass suffers. And this is why some stakeholders in Edo State are not folding their hands, as many are of the view that the state is sitting on a keg of gunpowder. No thanks to the face-off between Governor Basaki and his erstwhile godfather, Adam Sashomale. How will the politics in Edo State play out? Well, to discuss this with us is an analyst, Tony Usidame. Tony, uh, thanks for joining us on Newsblades. Thanks for having me. Uh, the elections are just around the corner. How prepared do you think the people of Edo State are? I think generally, um, when it comes to elections, people want to look at the track records of the candidates. As far as um, the people are concerned, the current governor of the state, Governor Godwin Obaseki, has done a great job. And so in terms of their readiness to vote, um, I can say that the people are 100% behind the governor because of his track record of achievement. Uh, the other part has to do with organization of the election, and that is the part that, you know, INEC uh, has to play. Um, primaries for both parties are going to be conducted in a few days, for all the parties, sorry, are going to be conducted in a few days, and um, very soon it will be clear who the uh, candidates for each of the parties will be. But as far as the people are concerned, the people of Edo State are ready, they know who the contenders are, they know their track records, and they know that the current governor has done such a great job that he deserves a second term in office. Yeah, and they are willing to back him. Okay, let's see how that will play out when, it, when the election day comes proper. But what about INEC? INEC is also a major player in this, in this election. How prepared is INEC? Uh, I think the best uh, person to talk about the preparedness of INEC would be INEC themselves. Um, INEC has already set uh, guidelines in place for all of the parties. And like I mentioned earlier, the parties are gearing up for their primaries to decide who would represent them come September 19, when the um, elections in the state would happen. Um, the logistics and all the administrative part of it, I think INEC will be in a better position to answer. But the parties are gearing up. The people are ready. They have seen... Uh, the candidates who are vying for their votes and the people. Um, I am an Edo person. I have family there. I have friends there. And the pulse of the people is that the current governor has done a great job and the people are ready to support him, come what may. I, I asked for INEC, how prepared INEC is intentionally because looking at it, uh, with this build-up before the elections, we see a lot of fracas between the governor, the incumbent governor, and uh, the former governor who happens to be. In terms of security, because uh, we're looking at Edo State as a hot bed for this election, do you think or do you have some security fears for this upcoming primary and then the elections? Program? Okay, as the chief executive officer of the state, the governor has a responsibility uh, to protect lives and property. And the governor is a peace loving governor, even though he has a, a stake in these elections, he um, would ensure that all the necessary steps to protect the people, to ensure that when people come out on the day of the election, they don't have any fears. Uh, the governor has put all of those, um, is working on all of those modalities. Um, I can assure you that once the parties have come out with their candidates for the election, Edo people are ready to conduct themselves peacefully, and the security agencies, I believe, uh, are also aware of you know, the, the situation, the tension in the state. Uh, the governor doesn't condone violence, and he would ensure that elements who want to take advantage of the tension to disrupt the polity do not succeed in doing so. You know, let's look at, you have said that you are from Edo States, and uh, I wish you were going to cast your vote there. I don't know if you travel, if the, if the boundaries are open across the states, but you are showing quite a lot of interest in this political matter, in these elections that are forthcoming. Can you tell me why that is? Yes, um, for so long, many of us professionals, young professionals from Edo State, have stood by the sidelines and watched events unfold. We've watched as some self-acclaimed godfathers who are actually a demographic minority called the shots in the affairs of the state. 
and most of them brazenly plunder our commonwealth. We feel that the time is right for us to step into the affairs of the state. Uh, we no longer want to sit by and watch um, the good works, for instance, that the current governor is doing um, go down the drain because of selfish interest. This is why I and a number of many, very many people, sons and daughters of Edo, both within Nigeria and outside the country, who have interest in what is happening in the state, have decided to start the I Am Edo movement. I Am Edo movement simply means no entity, no party owns or decides the affairs of the state. It is the people of Edo themselves. It is the man on the street. It is that child in school. It is the ordinary people of Edo state that should decide the fates, their own fate. Not any godfather. This was what we fought against um, before Shomale came into power and we will resist that same attempt now. The people of Edo have a right to choose who they want to lead them. They have interest in, in the state and so they should be um, allowed to exercise their franchise freely. You know, for a long time now, we, we've seen that, um, like you have stated, just a few people call the shots in, not just in Edo State, basically in many other Nigerian states. Nigerian politics, across, yes. Exactly, Nigerian politics. Now we are looking at um, unprecedented times, there's coronavirus, and then with this, uh, with this um, tension already in Edo State, are you concerned about voter, the voters coming out, or do you think there'll be a voter apathy for this election? Um, one of the main reasons, because the allegations that, you know, some disgruntled elements within the APC have um, against the governor is that he's not in favor of uh, direct primaries in the, in the state. And they are only looking at this from a political point of view. There is the political angle to this, but there's also the public health angle. Um, it appears like most of the people who are canvassing for the uh, direct uh, mode of primaries that would involve people gathering in about 200 locations within the state do not think that the COVID-19 situation is real. The statistics are there for everybody to see. We have a real public health emergency on our hands. And if the governor who, is, um, who has the responsibility to care for the people of the state has been advised by public health professionals that it will be better to limit gatherings of people to only places that have capacity um, for handling large crowds so that you can still observe the social distancing measures, then every well-meaning Edo person should support. We should, we should leave politics aside now because Politics will come and go, but if you lose a life, that life can never be gained again. So we must learn in this country to put the welfare or the lives of the people ahead of our personal interest. And this is what the governor is trying to do. Um, we should not only look at the political part of things. Yes, the parties have three modes that they can employ to choose their candidate, the direct, the indirect, or the consensus. But in deciding which mode to choose, follow the constitutions, and above all, respect the lives of the people. In this case, there's a public health emergency that would not suppose, support large gatherings in multiple places at the same time because, of course, of the COVID-19 situation. So it's, it's in the best interest of Edo people to follow these lines and not be guided you know, only by would politics. Argue, someone would argue that in some parts of you know, the world, elections have taken place, so why should Nigeria be different? You know, why should this kind of um, uh, restrictions of movement be placed in Edo State, despite the fact that some other countries have already conducted elections? Okay, so my first question to those who, you know, come from this, you know, line of thought is, does Nigeria have the same level of health facilities or preparedness in response to COVID-19 that other countries have? If you, if you can answer, um, if, you, if your answer is yes, then maybe you have a point. But if it is true that we, we're not anywhere near these other countries, I, I don't even know the countries that they're citing, if we're not anywhere near them, then why should we do the same thing? If, if, why should we adopt what worked in another place if it is not conducive 
for the times that we live in or the infrastructure that we have in place. So arguments about you know, things happening everywhere, I believe should be put into context. Within the Nigerian context, how ready are we to handle health um, emergencies? So we should be putting measures in place to reduce exposure to the virus instead of you know, championing causes that will seem to put the people at risk. Life, as I said, once lost cannot be regained. Regain, but elections, election cycles come and go. You know, I'm wondering if this would have been a narrative should the incumbent governor and the APC the national chairman were on the same page, they were friends. I'm wondering if this was going to be, um, you know, the same narrative. But as they're saying, politics, no permanent friends and no permanent uh, enemies. Now, looking at the fact that um, they have gone past those that would participate in the primary, they've disqualified uh, the governor, Governor Basaki. Uh, how do you think this is going to play out? Now he has, he can't run, he wants to run for a second term, but his party has denied him that opportunity. Yes, um, the NWC, that's the National Working Committee or the Screening Committee, um, has disqualified him on very, very trivial grounds, very unjust grounds, mm -hmm. but disqualifying him from contesting under the uh, umbrella of the APC does not mean that he cannot run under any party. As a matter of fact, because of the um, obvious good works of the governor, many of the other parties in the state are cutting him right now. But the governor has said he would make his um, next move known, um, I believe, in the, in the next few days. So I don't want to preempt him. Now, if the governor decides to run on any other platform, don't you think it will come back to bite him, knowing that uh, his party for now has said we, you, can't fly, you can't fly the party's flag because you have these issues, these issues, and these issues. So do you think that after the, if he wins you know, in the primary of those political parties, any political party he decides to go to, don't you think that in the courts, if he eventually wins the election, that APC wouldn't come after him for the same reasons they denied him those tickets? Yes, but l what are the reasons in the first place? One of the reasons is that uh, he had three credits and probably couldn't have secured admission into the University of Ibadan. I mean, that has been debunked by the university itself because the university has confirmed that he actually did study at the university and he's an alumnus of the university. The other uh, spurious allegation that they brought up was that there's a misspelling in his name, which is a minor technicality. Remember, remember that even in the presidential elections, um, when the, the current president was contesting, those issues came up within the same party. The president clinched the ticket and uh, went ahead and is, is our president now. So why should those same um, issues now be looked at differently inside the same party, if not because some people have ulterior motives uh, that are not in the interest of the party itself and in the interest of the good people of Edo State. You know, there's a lot to talk about because um, looking at um, the constitution of the party, uh, according to what the national chairman re echoed, uh, he said that um, people, well, party members, who do not, um, who take inter-party activities, you know, without exploring all the avenues in the party, stand to be expelled. And that is the position of the party now. So apparently, uh, after, he, after his tenure, uh, the first, his first term, he might be expelled from the party because we've seen that APC Nigeria State has recommended his expulsion from the party. Uh, like I said in the beginning, when two elephants fight, the grass suffers. How best do you think these crises in APC Edo State, how best do you think it should be resolved? I think um, one of the reasons why the polity is this heated is because um, the politicians, as it were, believe that they are the ones who actually decide the fate of the people. Because for too long, the people have let them, the people have ceded this power to the politicians. Now, people are talking about candidates produced by either the PDP or the APC. Nobody is talking about the electorate. Nobody is talking about the man out there, the ordinary Edo man who is going to decide. They feel that once the party has decided, then that is it. And this is the reason why you know, people are at each other's jugular. But we must begin to refocus attention 
from just the party. The parties are important because they're a good instrument, you know, for exercising your, your, your rights to leadership, to political uh, aspirations. But more importantly, power must return to the people. Politicians must begin to realize that without the people and without the people deciding who they want to lead them, there would never be inclusive progress in our society. I think people need to tell, the, tell them, not the other and, way And this, this is what the I Am Edo movement it's is about, about, because it is the people that decide, not entities, not parties, but the people of Edo themselves. And the people have spoken that they are behind Governor Godwin Obaseki based on the great work he has done across several economic se sectors, health, education, agriculture, the results are there for everyone to see and he deserves a second term. And we, the young professionals under the ages of the I Am Edo movement, will do all we can to make sure that we resist godfathers who do not have the best interest of the state at heart. Would you be voting? Um, unfortunately, election? I am not registered to vote in Edo State, but I will be mobilizing my family members in Edo State, um, give them reasons why they should support this governor. Many of the people under the movement will be doing the same. Wherever we are, we don't have to be on ground in Edo State. That is what the I Am Edo movement is about. Whether you are in America, whether in Australia, you have a stake in Edo State. You have people back home. You have investments back home. So it's time to take our own destiny in our hands. All right, Tony Usidamen, an analyst, thank you for your time with us thank on you. the news. All right, we'll take another break and we'll be right back right after. Please stay with us. <laughs>